Hello. Good morning, everyone. Uh, sorry for the delay. I'm a couple minutes delayed. I was having some technical issues. Um, but we are here running the Kids Learning Club like every morning at 1030 Monday to Friday. So don't worry, we are getting started. So again, welcome to those that are slowly signing in. Good morning. I hope you're having a fabulous Thursday. And I'm excited to get started with you today. Let's jump right in. Um, oh, by the way, I'm curious. I was just looking down at my notes from yesterday and I remembered that yesterday was April Fools. Um, I didn't get to see if anybody uh, did any funny jokes. Hi, good morning, Lima family. And good morning, Aiden and Addison. Hello, good morning. Um, thank you for saying hi. I was wondering if anyone uh, played some funny pranks or, or had a funny joke that they did with their family or with their siblings. Maybe you tried the poisson d'avril or the April fish and stuck a fish on a family member's back. If you did get to try something, uh, maybe at the end of our video today, you can share what you did. Okay, because I always like to hear about a good joke. So today is no longer April Fool's Day unless you're in Scotland. Remember, we learned yesterday that they do kind of a two days worth of April Fool's. So if you're in Scotland, watch out. Uh, good morning, Kim family. Hello, good morning. Thank you for joining us again today. Um, I think you had a birthday yesterday in the Kim family. Is that correct? Um, I hope you guys had a really great day. I hope that was fun. So again, at the end of the video, if you have um, any pranks or any jokes that you did from April Fools, we'd love to, to hear what happened. But you can do that at the end so that we're, we're focused uh, together right now. So welcome to the Kids Learning Club. We're going to dive in and start with our riddle, which is the first thing we do every morning with the Kids Learning Club. Yesterday's riddle was, what can run but not walk? What can run but not walk? So again, a little bit of a play on words. We are not thinking about running with legs, but water, okay? So we say that water runs, but we don't say that water walks, right? So that is the answer. We also had uh, Emmy yesterday that shared, her answer was a river. And that's absolutely right. Because um, we can say that a river runs, the river is running, okay? but we don't say that a river walks. So that's also a great response. Thank you. Um, and for today's riddle, uh, for today's riddle, we have, what two things can you never eat for dinner? Hmm. What two things, two things can you never eat for dinner? Interesting, think about that one. Now, I would encourage you, because we have some of us that we, we think this way, uh, don't think of it as mm, an apple or steak. Like, I'm not allowed to eat that at that meal. Got to think about it a little differently, okay? All right, so for today's fun fact, we have some fun props, okay? So that I can demonstrate our fun fact for you today. Okay, hello, Latero family. Hello, welcome. Um, I have a ball for you, and I have, if you can tell that I have very young kids at home, a globe, okay, which is a, um, a fun, colorful globe. And our fun fact today is actually, though, about the moon, and I'm going to use the globe to show you something. So did you know that every time you look up at the moon in the sky, you are seeing the same side of the moon? Isn't that interesting? It's even more interesting if you already know that the moon rotates, okay? So as the moon is up in the solar system, it rotates. And maybe you also know that the Earth rotates. Hmm, so you're saying that we see the same side of the moon even though the Earth is rotating and the moon is rotating and I'm always seeing the same side? What are the chances of that? Well, this happens because the moon 
rotates at almost the same rate or the same speed as the Earth. Now, if I'm not mistaken, that's about 27 days. Okay, so the Earth rotates and the moon rotates at about the same rate. So this is what happened. Now, I'm going to try to be two centers of gravity at the same time. Okay, so hang on with me. Okay, so the moon is spinning. I'm going to try to show the white side the whole time. The moon is spinning, okay, and then so is the Earth. All right, and they go around. Now, let me see. The moon goes around at the same rate as the moon. So you see how technically the moon is also spinning, and then so is the Earth, okay? I'm struggling here to be two centers of gravity. <laughs> now, since it's very difficult for a human person to be two centers of gravity at the same time, I'm going to show you a fabulous video. I'm gonna put the link at the bottom that explains this really, really well, okay? So again, our fun fact of the day, hola Tanya, hi. Our fun fact of the day is, Every time you look up at the sky and you see the moon, you're seeing the same side of the moon every single time. And it's because it spins at about the same rate as our planet Earth. Okay? So I'll share a little... Uh, <laughs> thank you, Susie. I will share a little uh, video with you so you can see that. Okay? You can see that more uh, visually. It'll be more helpful. Okay. Uh, after our brains are all mushed up with riddles and fun facts, we like to do a poem, uh, a fun poem, sometimes a very rich visual poem, um, sometimes something that's just funny. And for today, um, I would like to share a poem with you by a poet called Shel Silverstein. And maybe in your schools, you have a fun book by Shel Silverstein floating around your classrooms or libraries called where the sidewalk ends okay and that is a is a book that i grew up seeing and it's still out there it's a fabulous uh, collection of poems now mr Sil uh, silverstein has many more poems than what's in that book but today um i'm going to share one with you okay now check that out what's that all about okay there's a poor boy carrying a bunch of things you can't imagine what this is about this poem is called everything on it and it's kind of funny. So let's take a listen and see what that picture is all about. Everything on it. I asked for a hot dog with everything on it. And that was my big mistake. Because it came with a parrot, a bee in a bonnet, a wristwatch, a wrench, and a rake. It came with a goldfish, a flag and a fiddle, a frog and a front porch swing, and a mouse in a mask. That's the last time I ask. For a hot dog with everything. Isn't that funny? You've probably had that happen before. Maybe you uh, are with your family and, and someone says, oh, would you like everything on that burger? Would you like everything on that hot dog? And then you see those toppings go on and, oh, oh no, I don't like that. Oh, no, don't put that on. <laughs> and then you regret. I will never say that again. All right. Well, this one is extra funny. Okay. These are not normal things to be putting on a hot dog. Let's read that again. Shel Silverstein, the poem is called Everything On It. I asked for a hot dog with everything on it, and that was my big mistake, because it came with a parrot, a bee in a bonnet, a wristwatch, a wrench, and a rake. It came with a goldfish, a flag and a fiddle, a frog and a front porch swing, and a mouse in a mask. That's the last time I asked for a hot dog with everything. Okay, let's take another look at that picture and see if we can see all of those strange things in his hot dog. Oh my goodness. He looks a little overwhelmed. <laughs> okay, so for those of us that like to uh, draw pictures, maybe you want to imagine, um, this is not our activity challenge, but I just like to expand on these things. Maybe you like to imagine what strange and funny things could go on a hot dog or a burger or a pizza or even ice cream. Sometimes people say, yeah, put all the toppings that you have on my ice cream. And maybe you want to draw a picture of that. Those of us that are a little bit older, maybe you want to write a poem or a funny story about why 
your friend or you ended up with all these strange things in your ice cream or pizza or hot dog. That could be fun to do, okay? Again, I'm just uh, giving an idea that isn't our activity challenge for the day, but that could be fun. All right, for today's activity challenge though, uh, we will be sharing with you again in the comments, oh, we always share the links to the activities that we're talking about. Um, we're gonna be sharing with you uh, a salt dough recipe. And maybe you've worked with salt dough before, maybe not. Now, salt dough is um, different and special in a unique way than Play-Doh, first off, because you can make it at home, so that's fun. And your creation that you make from salt dough, you get to keep forever because after you make what you want to make with your salt dough, you get to... Uh, bake it in the oven, obviously with um, an adult's help, okay? So an adult will help you bake it in the oven for about 30 to 45 minutes. Again, we'll have the instructions for you. And you get to keep that thing forever, which is really exciting. So let me tell you a little bit about the possibilities of that. Now, before I share the possibilities and some ideas of what you can make with your salt dough, um, I do have to apologize that I got really excited about the possibility of making pancakes for breakfast. <laughs> and I used up a lot of my flour. And for salt dough, you need flour, salt, and water. Really easy, everybody should have this at home. But I was really hungry this morning and I made a lot of pancakes for my family and so I didn't have a lot of salt dough. I mean, a lot of flour, so I'm sorry. What I do have though is regular Play-Doh for now, just to show you what you can make. But your salt dough, when you make it, is going to look white. I have some blue Play-Doh, okay? Your salt dough is gonna look white and then you can paint it, okay? I'm pulling out the Play-Doh to show you what you can make with it, okay? Because I couldn't make salt dough. I was a little hungry this morning, sorry. Okay, so in our link, we are going to share with you the recipe, but more specifically, when uh, Miss Sarah and her family made salt dough beads. Now, to make salt dough beads, which you can use to make bracelets, necklaces, even a crown, um, a special ring, anything like that, um, you're going to roll up your Play-Doh in a ball, okay, like this, or on your tabletop, right on our tabletop, we can do this to roll our Play-Doh beads in a ball. Um, then we can use something like a straw. Okay, if you have a straw, you can cut it up so it's easier for small hands to use. And you can poke it through your bead like this. Poke it through. Sometimes you'll get a little bit of Play-Doh at the other end. And that's going to be where you put your string or your rope for your bracelet, okay? Um, it's going to go through that hole. And that hole is going to stay intact, okay? Or it's going to stay in place. I'm not sure if you can tell that I got a little hole there. Okay, there we go. That's gonna stay in place because you're gonna cook the bead. So it's not gonna get squished. Okay, it's not gonna, it's not gonna break. That hole's gonna stay there for you and you can move it. You can be comfortable moving it around uh, while you make your necklace. If you don't have straws, maybe us Canadians don't have a lot of plastic straws, we all know why, uh, <laughs> then uh, you can use a skewer. Mom and dad might have this. Of course, be careful, skewers can be a little pokey. So if you're young, maybe mom and dad can help you with that. You can use a skewer to do that, okay? If you're making really big beads and you don't have any one of those things, uh, perhaps you could use a pen or pencil, okay, to a thin one to help you poke through. Great. So you do that many, many times. Make as many beads as you want. It's going to be white, okay? You bake it and then you're going to paint your beads whatever colors you want. A solid color, like all blue, all purple, all green, or you can even poke, paint little dots on it and little designs. Um, since Easter is coming, I decided to share another idea with you to make with your salt dough. So if you don't feel like making beads to make any jewelry or anything like that, uh, you can make an Easter egg, okay? Um, now, this might be a little challenging to see because I have young kids that mix up the colors of Play-Doh, okay? And maybe you can see too that I have some little etchings that I made. I kind of scratched up my egg. And this doesn't look very exciting right now, okay? Because um, my Play-Doh is kind of just one color, okay? Now what's really cool is if you make designs on your egg, you can then, once the dough is cooked, paint on top of your design. So you will see that I had some lines. Now I used everyday things that I have at home to make lines. 
These top lines here that you see, I used milk tags and I just poked some lines up at the top, okay? And then I used, obviously I'm a fork, okay, to scratch out some lines at the top. And then I have some curved lines too, maybe that you can see, these little curves here in the middle, okay? I used a spoon to make those curves, okay? I just pressed inside. Um, and then I used my skewer to poke in holes. But maybe you don't want things poked into your egg, okay? Maybe you don't wanna do that. Maybe you want to have things popping out of your egg, okay? And that's why I then used, well, you would use salt dough, but I used other colored Play-Doh just to show you. I used, um, I made little balls to make circles that popped out of my egg, or I rolled a little snake, kind of like a little tube, and I made um, a line that popped out of my egg, okay? So you can play around with making marks that go into your salt dough and making things that pop out, and then you can paint it and have a little decorated Easter egg, okay? I do apologize that my, I have Play-Doh and not salt dough because I ate too many pancakes this morning and uh, that my Play-Doh colors are a little mixed up, but I think you got the idea, okay? So um, hopefully you can have lots of fun uh, doing that today or whenever your family has some time to make that salt dough, and I will share the recipe in the comments, okay? Now, for those of you that uh, have been uh, following us this week, you know that this is our second week of the Kids Learning Club, um, sort of the third, Okay, we had Miss Sarah in the very, very first week. And um, we are trying to do a theme each day. And it's a new thing at the very end. We do the same stuff at the beginning. And at the very end, we do a different little theme. And I'm going to try to keep this short because we're kind of going, uh, taking a long time here. Thank you for bearing with me. Today's theme so uh, is going to be uh, learning some French. So on Thursdays, I'm going to be sharing some fun French words with you and expressions that you can use at home. Now, why French? So for those of you that are not in Canada, uh, you, you may not know, you may know, you may not know, but in Canada, uh, French is our other official language and uh, we learn it in school. Um, in the US, I know that many schools uh, learn Spanish. Okay, so Spanish is the second official language. Um, we do French here and, and we're hoping that you're okay <laughs> with, with hearing a little bit of French. And if you are learning uh, Spanish or another language where you're from, learning any additional language helps with that and it supports it. Even though it's different, it supports all the learning because a lot of languages share similar words or similar sounds. Um, so we're gonna have some fun with that. Now here's the problem. You need to help me out. I couldn't come up with a fun word for my French day. Okay, so I have music and movement Mondays. See, mm -mm -mm. I like alliteration. That's what it's called when all the words have the same uh, first letter. Tongue twister Tuesday. We have worldly Wednesday, but we don't have a theme for Thursday. Okay, and it's French. Maybe you could help me out. Maybe you can come up with one. All right, so I need, I need a theme name. So for today, we're gonna keep it super easy. Okay, if you've never done French before, um, or whenever you're learning a new language, everyone always wants to know how to say hello, right? Hello and goodbye, nice and easy, okay? So to say hello in French, the standard or more common way is just bonjour. So if you can repeat after me, bonjour, bonjour. I will share with you in another video how those are spelled, okay? But today we're just listening. And to say goodbye, it's au revoir, au revoir. Try it. Au revoir. So hello is bonjour. Goodbye is au revoir. All right. And you know your family members. You're probably not going to be saying uh, hello. Well, maybe not goodbye to them too often because you guys are kind of at home. But I know that everyone wants to always know how to say hello and goodbye. So that's why I shared that with you. But two things that you're going to learn today that I know you're going to use at home is the word please. So if um, you want a snack from mommy and daddy or mommy and daddy need to help you with something, maybe instead of saying please, you can try to say s'il vous plaît, which is French for please. So today, if you want to practice a French word, instead of saying please, you can say s'il vous plaît. Again, s'il vous plaît. And again, all together, s'il vous plaît. 
s'il vous plaît. Okay, perfect. And we're going to wrap up with some uh, quick numbers in French and a little song. This may be moving fast for some of us, but that's okay. We'll recap everything um, in another video and I'll share a YouTube clip uh, with a song that I'm going to do with you now too. Okay, so another important thing that we all like to know when we learn a new language is numbers. Okay, so again, if mom and dad made some muffins today and you actually want five muffins instead of one, okay, that's totally reasonable. You want to eat five muffins. Uh, maybe don't say five. Maybe you can say cinq. Okay, you can say whatever number we're going to learn today in French. So you're going to count with me, okay, one at a time. We're going to do our numbers in French up to seven. It's a funny way to end, but you'll know why in a minute. So, un, un, deux, deux, trois, trois, quatre, quatre, cinq, cinq, six, six, and set, set. I'm going to say them really slowly again. Un, un, deux, deux, trois, trois, quatre, quatre, cinq, cinq, six, six, and set. Un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, set. Okay, now don't fall asleep on me. We're going to do a really quick song, and then we're going to wrap up. Okay? I know that was slow. <laughs> okay? So, a fun, very short song to remember our 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 is a little song called uh, Violette à Bicyclette. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, a girl named Violet on a bike. That's all you need to know. Okay, ready? Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Violette, Violette. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Violette à bicyclette. Done. One more time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Violette, Violette. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Violette à bicyclette. You know your number's up to seven. You can ask for five muffins. You can then ask, you can then say please for those muffins. Beg a little bit. S'il vous plaît. Please, s'il vous plaît. And then you can run off with your five muffins and say au revoir, mama. <laughs> okay? Au revoir. And then bonjour when you come back with your belly full. There you go. You can use French today. All right? I will share a link with you uh, at the bottom with those songs. If you do your salt bead dough uh, today, I'd love to see it. And on Fridays, we do a theme, a little dress-up theme. Tomorrow's dress-up theme is going to be wearing your favorite color. Wear as much of your favorite color as you can. If all you have is a little bow or a little bracelet with your favorite color, that's great too. Okay? Thank you so much uh, for being with us today, and I, I hope you have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye. Au revoir.